Hello everyone. So, in the previous video, we did some experiments with the common emitter with shunt feedback, which I've discussed is actually the feedback topology that we are going to be using in the final design. So in today's video, we are going to improve this circuit so that we get more gain with better linearity and less distortion. And the way that I said we are going to do it is to add a current source like we've discussed in a previous video. So let's merge these circuits together into a common emitter with a current source. Okay. Let's start by drawing our current source. We're going to be using this topology of current source since it uh, requires less components and in my opinion is more versatile. We have our plus this feeds into our current circuit transistor. This goes into a GMP transistor. This. So now that we have our current source, let's put the exact same circuit that we had before with the common emitter. As you can see, it's, it's, we, are literally, we are literally just um, combining these two circuits together. Now that we've drawn the circuit, let's just put some um, component designators here. So we are going to do the same thing as we did before, just for consistency. It's going to be our I, our um, input resistor. We're going to have R2 here. We're going to have our feedback resistor as RF. This we're just going to leave blank. Let's just call this, in this case, like R1. Then we are going to have our RS here, which is going to be the resistor that's going to set the current through this whole stage. So now let's start by putting some values to these resistors. First, let's say that we want 1 milliamp flowing through this whole stage, which is fairly reasonable. It's what we've been dealing with in the past videos. So to have 1 milliamp flowing through this stage, since we are going to have one VB present at this node right here because of that property that we have seen in the current source video, we should put this, we should set this resistor, let's say, at uh, 560 ohms. If we set it to uh, 600 ohms, we would get actually the one milliamp that we want, but 600 ohms is not a standard value. 680 ohms is the standard value as well, but in that case, the, this VB here should be a little bit higher for there to be one milliamp flowing through here. And what would actually happen if we would get around like 0 0.8, 0 0.9 milliamps flowing through here. And I just want a little bit more current just to tame down the noise a little bit. So I've chosen to go with the 600 and to go with the uh, 560 ohm in this case. Now for R1, I'm just going to go with the same 10K resistor that we've used in the previous video. That's just so that we don't have uh, a high current flowing through here. For example, if we chose like 1K, we would be like dissipating around like um, 10 milliamps just, just to bias this little transistor here. Since this already have a um, HFE of more than 100, the current flowing through the base of this transistor is going to be minimal, around like one microamp. So we don't need 10 milliamps flowing through here. If this was a power stage, we would need to choose a uh, lower value resistor here, just so we could uh, overcome the um, 
the base current. In this case, 10k is going to be enough. We have 1 milliamp flowing through here, just to bias this, and 1 milliamp flowing through here. Good enough. So let's go for 10k here. Now, just so that we stay consistent with our previous example, let's just replicate the same values of resistors here to see when we do the experiments, how this circuit improve by using the current source. Okay, this way we will have a, a fair comparison. We're not changing the gain, we're not changing any of the values. So we'll have 100K here, we'll have a 12K resistor here, and a 22K resistor here, All right? So now, We've designed the circuit. It was very simple. We just meshed together two circuits that we have previously seen. If you want uh, any more information about uh, each one of these and how we've calculated any of these resistors, just go and check out their individual videos. All the information that we want will be there. So without further ado, let's just jump on over to some experiments. Now that I've rearranged the bench, and built up the circuit here on a breadboard. Let's take some measurements to see if everything that we've done before still holds true. So first of all, let's take a look at what we have changed, the current source. If we go from the emitter to the collector of this transistor right here, so we are going to probe this point, this point, and this point, what we are going to see is that we have the full power supply voltage here, which right now is sitting at 12 volts. At this point, we will have one VBE. And at this point, we are going to have two VBEs, right? So first node, 12 volts. Then at the base, we have one VBE drop. And at the collector right here, we have two VBE. So the circuit is working fine. We can see also that our current is at around 1 milliamp. Now, let's start by going through to this point right here. It should be at around 6 volts, like in the previous circuit. So yeah, it's higher, just as we had in the previous one as well, because of our VB, uh, the changes in VB and the tolerance of the resistors, also the values of the resistors. So there it is. So. Now, oh, another thing. If we probe the base of this transistor right here, it should be at VBE. There we go, same thing as we did before. So, even after we have put this current source without changing any of the bias in here, we got exactly the same values that we did before. And with the current source, we just used what we had in the previous video, like about three or four videos ago. And again, just mash this, these two circuits into one and it works flawlessly right out of the box without having to do any changes to it whatsoever. So after we've done this, let's fire up the oscilloscope and take a look at the AC side of things. Now let's begin by probing our input signal. As you can see, we have still have the same one volt peak to peak that we had in the previous video. If we probe right here at this node, right after the capacitor and before the input resistor, our signal is still there. And now for the interesting bit, if we try to probe the base, there is absolutely nothing there, just like before. Now, if we go to the collector, there it is, our amplified signal. And this time, instead of having uh, 3.8 volts, we actually have a healthy like 4.5 volts, which means that we are getting a gain of 4.5. Before we had some attenuation because of that resistor, the lack of gain and stuff like that. So right now we have proven this is very close to the value that we had in the um, uh, first common emitter uh, video. So we are actually amplifying things pretty well. Remember here that I've changed the resistors a bit. I have a 100K here, I have 22K here, and a 100K here. So the only resistor that changed is this, is this one. Now, one thing you gotta keep in mind, we have tolerances here. 
So what we've calculated is for the perfect example, here we have a real world, a world example with um, some tolerances. So we will have some discrepancies in the final gain, but that's pretty much close enough. Now, if we start probing around, if we go to the base of this transistor right here, we see no signal there, which is great, which means that the input um, of the input impedance of our current source is extremely high and that signal is not leaking into it. Which means that we've turned the previous circuit, let me just grab it right here, the circuit right here, which had pretty poor performance because of, we had set a lowish value resistor here. We've changed it for a current source, which effectively brings the input impedance here for this amplifier to much greater levels by orders and orders of magnitude. That way, the gain of the single stage, the open loop gain of this single stage just goes like sky high. And then we get a lot more linearity in our feedback network, which is great. We've reduced distortion, we've uh, maximized our voltage swing here. We now have tons of open loop gain to play around, which begs the question, so how can we turn this into a headphone amplifier? That's pretty simple. What we are going to do is just couple this stage directly into an emitter follower. So yeah, we've gone full circle now. <laughs> we've gone from the emitter follower to the common emitter. Now we're just going to mash them together. That's going to be it. So in the next episode, this was a, a, a short one, I guess. So in the next episode, we are going to look at exactly that. We are going to be combining these two circuits. So I'm going to be showing you the final circuit that's actually going to be the uh, headphone amplifier. We are going to go through all of it. We're going to be identifying all of these little circuit building blocks that we've been talking about through the past uh, videos. So yeah, that's, uh, that's simply going to be it, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. If you have any feedback, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below and um, hope you see you in the next one. Bye.